I think it's a policy mistake personally. I think it's a failure for Powell to actually convince the rest of the committee to do this because I do believe that he wanted to make this move. And now we you, have to You're contend saying the mistake is that they didn't do more. That they did not do more. That they should have done 50 basis points, not 25. Yeah, whereas, David, you think the mistake is that they cut it all. Well, I, yeah, I mean, I th this, is, this is not bad. I mean, I think this is, this is about as good as I could have hoped for. But I would still have liked them, and I hope he does this at the press conference. He's got to set out some, some, some guide, guidelines as to just, you know, low inflation. Yeah, we'd like inflation to be higher, but that's not a reason to go to zero. And he needs to say that because people are going to just price in successive, successive rate cuts. And the key thing that everybody misses here is it doesn't stimulate anything. Because what it does is it pushes up asset prices, which feed money towards richer people who don't spend it. You don't get extra aggregate demand. You don't get extra inflation. This hasn't worked in Europe. It hasn't worked in Japan. It hasn't worked in the United States. And it won't work going it's forward. It's a wasted cut. It's, well, it doesn't, it doesn't work. And, and there are, there's a lots of negatives of having interest rates in the wrong place. And I don't see much positive. Do you think this is about making that yield? This is going to be wonky, but is it really important for him to explain the yield curve and say, you know what, we thought we went once or twice too many times last year. We're going to undo that now. So if, if the market needs to know, hey, they're basically going to make sure that yield curve steep again and then they're going to stop, do you think he can effectively communicate that? No, I don't think so. I, I think, I think the, the key thing is for him to talk about a balance of objectives here. And inflation does perhaps justify doing something to help the economy. I don't think this does, but it, th that's an excuse. But, but the yield curve, I think it will be too... Co and besides, they can't control it. So what happens if the yield curve doesn't do what they wanted to do? Then they're going to be back, you know, with further rate cuts. By the way, taking a look at the yield curve right now, what we have is a, is a slight rise in the two-year uh, yield and a rise also in the 10-year yield. So mm. that's where we stand at this point without that Powell press conference yet. Alicia? So I, I would agree with Jim that they, they should have gone 50 today, and they should have gone for the reasons that we've discussed which is that you've got the inflation expectation problem and the strong dollar problem. And that really, the stronger dollar is what's going to blow back to the U.S. economy ultimately and hurt our corporate sector because the S&P and the corporate sector absorbs weakness overseas and the stronger dollar in a way that the overall economy does not. So you feel it in the corporate sector and you feel it in the but market. But how much can they realistically, David, do you think weaken? If you're saying that a goal of there should be to weaken the dollar, make sure it's not too strong. Yeah. How much can they realistically no, do that? Not, not too much with the, with the current setup. I mean, first of all, this is really the Treasury Department's decision on dollar policy. But second of all, if you really want to weaken the dollar, look at their balance sheet. The balance sheet is three and a half trillion dollars of U.S. assets. If you really want to do something about it, buy, you know, how about a trillion dollars worth of euro assets? Mm -hmm. I mean, there, there are dramatic things the Federal Reserve could do. I don't think there's anything left to buy in Europe. <laughs> Again, no, but, they're going to have to compete with the ECB. Well, that, 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 that's, that's true. But, but buy those euro denominated no, assets. But, but actually, uh, I mean, that's, that's what you could do to, to, move, to move exchange rates. But, but this is, the, these central bank policies aren't working. It's really much more on the fiscal side. I want to go back this. to something you mentioned a minute ago and, and ask you to a, a, a expand a little bit yeah. on it. You talked about how lower interest rates affect asset prices. Yes. Right? And that that is one of the key things. It, it may do very little to stimulate the economy. Yep. It's probably going to do almost nothing to stimulate the global economy. Yep. Right? Okay? But, but asset prices are another matter. Yes. We had a guest on the other day who said, the lower you go, the more you coat, coat coax irrational exuberance Absolutely. out of Absolutely. the closet. You worry uh, about absolutely. that? Very much so. We went for decades with the total value of U.S. financial assets being about four times GDP. It's now seven times GDP and rising. And all of these are coupons. They are basically saying, I am entitled to buy some part of the U.S. economy. And we keep on printing more coupons, uh, but we're not actually producing more output. So, yes, it's, it's almost the definition of a bubble maker. With all that said, though, do you still invest in stocks right now? I mean, can you, can you ignore what the Fed is doing and say, you know what, I see that this is a push higher in asset prices. I'm not going to participate when the markets keep going higher. So this, this feels like 1998. It doesn't feel like 2007, meaning that the, the economy is good enough. We have strength in the labor market and therefore in the consumer sector. Consumer is 70 percent of the economy. So with rate cutting and different expectations on discount rates, yes, you buy equities here. I mean, you know, the riskiest parts of the of the assets are going to rally on this. And yes, there's the risk of the bubble, but here we are.